Let me bring out one of the most accomplished actresses in the history of film and stage. Her natural beauty and great talent sparkled in such classics as Casablanca, Gaslight, Notorious, Joan of Arc, Autumn Sonata, on and on and on. She's told the story behind those films and her life in this new autobiography. Ingrid Bergman, my story. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ingrid Bergman. I know you're bored to death with the, the story of the Stromboli filming and Mr. Rossellini. Uh, and you're going to be asked about it everywhere you go. You realize that, but you write about it in your book. So we'll just touch on it and then get on to other wonderful aspects of your career. Um, at the time that happened, you had seen a picture that had been mm. directed by Roberto Rossellini. Uh, yes. And you fell in love with his work, yes. so much so that you went back and saw it a second time. No, no, that I didn't do. But I went, to, I waited for a second picture of his, because, I mean, I was so moved and so mm -hmm. taken by uh, Open City uh, there was nothing like it in, in Hollywood what in those days. What quality of the The realistic it? quality, that it looked real. Everything was in the street. Everything was in a real house. And the actors, they he had actors, but they didn't look like actors. You know, they had not combed their hair and they had no makeup and long eyelashes. They looked like real people. And then, of course, the story is really so moving about Rome and the open city during the war. Did you feel and at that point in your career, though, that whatever you had done in Hollywood, although it was wonderful, was a little too glossy and, yes, and too actorish? Yes, I had started to feel that. I had been 10 years, and uh, though I was very lucky, I, I'm not knocking Hollywood, because yeah. I had a very good time. Good directors, good stories, good leading men, and it was just that in me is the quality I want to change. I wanted to do something different, and I thought another movie, well, it's similar to this one, and then I see this movie, and of course, immediately I wanted to go to Italy and do a movie like that. So you then wrote a letter to Mr. Rossellini. Yes, I waited for that second picture because I thought that maybe, you know, there are people that make one marvelous movie and then they disappear. So I thought I better wait until I find another. In the meantime, I tried to find out who Mr. Rossellini was and where he lived and could I find his address. I saw the movie Paisa and then I knew, now I'm going to write to him because I thought he'd never f look for me in Hollywood. So he got my letter where I, you know, I said I could speak several languages and could I come to Italy and make a picture? Was there any part that I could play? And it was a very strange story with that letter because I got the address from a fan who stopped me in the street and asked for my name. And uh, as he, I was writing, he asked, he said to me, I'm Italian, you know. And I said, have you heard about Roberto Rossellini? I said, sure, that's our great director. Where does he live? I said, Rome, send it to Minerva Film. So I sent it to Minerva Film, and Minerva Film burned down. Exactly when my <laughs> letter arrived, it burned. But it was saved. It was a little, little burned in the, it, but the letter was there. And uh, how strange it is in life that if my letter had been burned, uh, I would never have gone to Italy. I would never have written a second letter. Uh, and uh, I would uh, not have met this man, and I would not have my three children. It's strange right. how easily a letter could have disappeared, but it didn't. He got the letter, read it, didn't understand one word of it. He didn't even know who I was. <laughs> he didn't know who you were? No, he didn't go to movies. He didn't like movies very much. He made movies, but <laughs> he didn't like to go see other people's movies. No. He did documentation, he did documentaries. But he must have looked at your films. Yes, yes. Uh, he, then it was explained to him that I had played Intermezzo and they, you know, they gave him the list of movies and Intermezzo he remembered that he had seen. And he'd seen it several times because it was during a bombing of Rome and he ran to the, sh to the shelter and that was the cinema. And he went in there and it was a very long bombardment so he sat there. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, of course, the romance started on Adam Stromboli, and then we here, in turn, started seeing it on the front pages of all of our newspapers. I think at one point, even members of Congress were suggesting yeah. that you never return to this nation again. Yes. You were a scandalous woman. Yes. 
because you fell in love with a man and were, was burying his child. I wonder, in retrospect, when you look at the world today and you look at the Hollywood community and the scandals that have invaded people's lives today and are dismissed, or either that or used to sell their motion pictures, that there is no scandal anymore. People can behave as outrageously as they feel mm. like it, and it makes for wonderful writing, and the public all goes, well, whoopee, somebody else is at it again. Yes. When you look back. It's hard to make a scandal today, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> is there bitterness when you look at what happened to you in your life and your career? And No, there's no bitterness. I don't have that in me. Oh, good. I don't have that. No, I, of course I was hurt. Who wouldn't be hurt to be called, you know, evil woman, and I was a, a corruption, and I, I, I was a danger for American womanhood. Right, right. Well, you know, I thought it was just me, and I don't say that I did the right thing at all. I felt very guilty and very ashamed, but there I was, but at least I stood up for what I had done, and uh, I was going to face the world, and I also, uh, when everybody was against me, I even said, I, I shall quit the screen forever if that helps because I was afraid I had ruined Joan of Arc, it was still running, and I had ruined the picture Stromboli, and uh, so I, you know, I thought of finishing right. my career, but then I didn't do that. <laughs> I, that didn't help. Does it take its toll with the children? I mean, are they aware of... Uh, well, they laugh at it. They are the new generation. They think it's all right. nonsense. <laughs> like, how about mom? <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll come back with Ingrid Bergman. My story. Thank you.